In the chase for maximum smoothness, we now have two powerful but completely different technologies, in-game frame generation and the new driver level NVIDIA Smooth Motion. Both promise to boost your FPS to the sky, but they do it in different ways. But what happens when you apply next generation technology to old game engine that was never built for it? When you unlock the frame rate in Metal Gear Solid Delta, both frame generation and smooth motion break the game's physics, causing unnatural, overly smooth movement. Today, we're not just benchmarking FPS, we're analyzing a broken game to see which technology, despite this fundamental flaw, provides the more playable high frame rate experience. This is a battle of two philosophies. Who wins? Let's get to the data. But before we begin a quick note, today I will show you how to unlock the FPS and enable frame generation and smooth motion. However, I won't be showing how to remove the unnatural slow motion movement bug that this causes. We will save that part for a big video tomorrow. First, the easy one. To enable NVIDIA Smooth Motion, you simply need the NVIDIA app. Open the app, find the graphics settings for the game, and toggle the Smooth Motion option on. If you want to swap your DLSS version from an older one like 3 to the new version 4, you have two options. You can either use a community tool like DLSS Swapper, or manage it directly within the NVIDIA app. In both, you can select the game and update to the latest available version. Enabling native in-game frame generation for our test is a bit tricky. You'll need to navigate to the file path shown on screen. In that folder, open the engine.ini file. You'll need to add a few specific commands to this file. I will post the exact text you need to copy in the pinned comment below this video. If you want to see the same detailed test in other games in the future, subscribe and like. This will tell me that you want even more, and I will have the motivation to do benchmarks even better. Before we get to the test, let's understand the key difference. Frame generation, as part of DLSS or FSR, is a technology integrated by developers into the game itself. It uses game engine data like motion vectors to create high-quality intermediate frames. It's a complex but potentially higher quality approach. Smooth Motion, on the other hand, is NVIDIA's answer to AMD's Fluid Motion frames. It's a driver level solution, it doesn't require developer support, and can work in almost any DirectX 11 or 12 game. But this universality comes at a cost, the technology lacks access to engine data and relies solely on analyzing finished frames, which can lead to more artifacts and higher latency. And now, let's address the critical issue. This game was designed with a 60 FPS lock in mind. When we uncap the frame rate and enable either frame generation or smooth motion, the game's physics and animations break. This isn't a fault of the technologies themselves, but a flaw in the game's engine which can't handle high frame rates correctly. Our goal today is to see which technology, despite this fundamental problem, delivers a more stable and statistically superior experience. Now for the numbers, and the data tells a remarkably consistent story across all resolutions. Native frame generation isn't just winning, it's dominating, especially when it comes to stability. Let's look at the averages first. At 1080p, frame generation delivered a powerful 161 FPS against smooth motions 140. This lead holds at 1440p with 127 versus 115 FPS, and even at 4K, frame generation maintains its edge. But the real story, the number that translates directly to the feel of the game, is in the lows. And this is where it becomes a knockout. At 1440p, frame generation's 1% lows were 35% higher than smooth motions. But the 0.1% lows, the measure of worst case stutter, were a staggering 140% better. We saw the same trend across the board. In every single test, frame generation provided a significantly more stable experience. This means fewer jarring stutters and a more fluid feel, which is exactly what these technologies are supposed to deliver. So, what should you choose? Based purely on the data, native frame generation is the clear winner. Despite the broken game physics, it delivers a statistically superior experience with a higher average frame rate and, crucially, much more stable 1% and 0.1% lows across all resolutions. If you have to choose one of these broken methods, this one is numerically the smoothest. NVIDIA Smooth Motion proves its concept as a universal tool, but in a direct comparison, it can't match the stability of a native solution. It's the less preferable option of the two in this specific game. Ultimately, this is a cautionary tale. Powerful technologies can't always fix a game engine that wasn't built to handle them. For MGS Delta, frame generation is the better choice, but the truly best experience might ironically come from locking your frame rate back to 60 and waiting for a patch. We have compared two frame generation technologies, but both of them increase input latency. The next logical question is, how much does each of these technologies impact input lag, 
And can this latency be compensated for using NVIDIA Reflex? We'll conduct